Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, we will start designing this animated hero section using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And we'll also use GSAP for the animation. So I'll just show you the demo. So if you refresh this page, we can see that we have this animation for all these elements inside our hero section. And this is also completely responsive. So if I decrease the width of the browser window, this is how it will look on smaller screens and we have the animation on smaller screens as well. And we have this menu icon over here and if I click on that, we have the menu displayed over here. So this is what we're going to design in this tutorial series. Now in this first video, I'll just show you how to create the design of this using HTML and CSS. So let's get started. <laughs> Alright, so here I have created this folder called animated hero section and I just opened it with VS code and I also have this folder called images and in that we have this hero image. So let's start by creating the necessary file. So let's create a new file and let's call it index.html and let's create one more file called style.css and let's create one more file called main.js. Alright, let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS Code, you can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. Now here in the title, I'll just type welcome. And let's link our CSS file over here. So I'll just type link and press tab. And here in the SRF, let's type style.css. And let's link the JavaScript file over here in the body. So I'll just type script, colon src and press tab. And here let's type main.js. And now the next thing we will do is we will get the link of the fonts. So we need to get the inter font and for the inter font, we need to have the bold version and this regular version. And we need to have the Poppins font for this heading. And we need to get the bold version of the font. So let's go to Google Fonts. All right, so here I'm in fonts.google.com and uh, let's search for inter. And let's select this font. And let's select the regular version. So regular 400, let's select this. And let's select the bold version. So I'll just select bold 700. And now let's select the Poppins font. So I'll just search for Poppins. And let's select this and we need to get the bold version from this. So I'll just select bold 700. And now let's click on this icon called view selected families. And here we have the link of the font. Now you can copy this HTML code or this CSS code. I just copy this CSS code. So let's copy this and let's go back and let's go to the CSS file and I'll just paste it over here. So here we can see we are getting inter 400 and 700 and poppins 700. Right now let's go to the HTML file and let's start creating the markup of our design. So the first thing we will do is we will create a nav element. Now if you take a look at the design, we can see that we have this max width for this content. So if I zoom out, we can see that the content of the website has a max width. So for that, let's go ahead and create another division and let's give it a class of container. You can name this class anything you want. Now in this container class, we will add all the content. So first of all, let's create this logo. So I'll just create an anchor tag and here let's give it a class of logo. And here I'll just type logo. You can also add an image if you want over here. And then after the logo, we need to have these menu items. So let's create a division with the class of menu items. And in this, we will have anchor tags and you can add the links of the pages over here. I'll just type hash for now. And we have about portfolio services and contact. So let's type about and I'll just duplicate this. And then we have portfolio and services and contact. Now if you go back here, we also have this button. So for the button also, we will have an anchor tag, but we'll also give it a class. And let's give it a class of BTN. And here let's type learn more. Right now let's open this in the browser and let's see how it looks. So I have this extension called live server installed in VS code. So once you have this extension installed, you can just right click over here in the HTML file and click on open with live server. And now we can see that our content is displayed in the browser. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to create this hero section. So let's go outside the nav and let's create a section and let's give it an ID of hero. Now in this, the first thing we will do is we'll create the IMG tag and uh, let's type images forward slash hero image dot jpg in the source. So now if you go back here, we can see we have the image displayed. 
and uh, then let's go ahead and add the rest of the content so we need to have this text content over here so let's create a division with a class of text content now we need to have a max width for this text content so let's add the same class that we added over here so let's tap dot container now in this container we need to have the left section and the right section so let's create a division with a class of left and in the left section we need to have a heading so let's create an h1 and let's copy this heading and let's paste it over here and then let's create a right section now in this we need to have a paragraph and let's give it a class of subheading and let's copy this text and let's paste it over here and then we need to have these two buttons so let's create a division with a class of buttons now in this division we will have anchor tags for the buttons and let's give it a class of btn and here let's tap explore now we need to create one more button so let's duplicate this and here we need to type learn more now this button has a different styling so let's also give it a class of light and we will style it differently in the css so with that we have completed writing the html of our design and uh, here we can see all the elements are being displayed over here now let's go to our css and let's start styling this so the first thing we will do is uh, we will target the body and uh, let's remove the existing padding and margin and let's set the font family to enter and sans serif and let's set the color of all the text to 111822 right now let's select all the anchor tags so let's type a and let's remove the underlines so let's tap text decoration and let's set it to none and let's set the color of all the anchor tags to 111822 right now let's style the container class so let's go back and let's type container and we need to add a max width for this so let's tap max width and let's set the max width to 1100 pixels and let's also bring it to the center so let's tap margin 0 auto and let's also add a padding of 0 26 pixels right now let's go ahead and set the position of the nav to fixed so that even if you scroll down the nav should be fixed at the top so let's target the nav and let's set the position to fixed and let's set the top position to zero and now let's go ahead and add a background color so let's tap background and let's set it to white and now we can see that the width has reset so for that we need to type left zero and right zero and now we have the correct width and let's also set a padding of 8 pixels top and bottom and 0 for left and right and let's also set the z index to let's try 400 so that it is above all the other elements all right now we want the logo to be on the left side and this menu items on the right side so for that we need to target the container division which is this division with the class of container so let's target the container inside the nav so let's tap nav container and let's set the display to flex and justify content to space between and let's also align items to the center right now let's style this logo so for the logo we have this anchor tag with the class of logo so let's type logo and let's set the font weight to bold and let's set the font size to 20 pixels and text transform uppercase Right now we need to have some gap between these menu items so they are inside this division with the class of menu items so let's target that i'll just tap nav menu items and let's set the display to flex and let's set a gap of 32 pixels and align items to the center and now we can see we have this gap between the menu items right now let's go ahead and style this button so for the button we have this class of btn so here let's tap dot btn now for the button we will set the background color to 111822 and let's set the color of the text to white and let's add a padding of 8 pixels top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right and uh, let's also add a border radius of 30 pixels and this is how the button looks now if you scroll down here also we have the styling for the button because we have the same class over here now for the other button we also have this class of light so let's add the styles of this light button so here i just type btn.light 
And when we have the light class, we will set the background color to white and we will add a border of one pixel solid 111822 and we'll set the color of the text to black. And now we can see we have this light button. Now for this dark button, we don't have the correct height because we also have this border for this light button. So we have two pixels of height added for this light button because we have the border on the top and the bottom of one pixels each. So let's go ahead and add a border over here as well. So let's tap border and let's set it to one pixel and let's set the same color. So let's tap 111822. And now we can see that both these buttons have the same height. All right now let's target the hero section and uh, let's set the height. So let's tap hash hero because we have an ID of hero for this section. And let's set the height of the hero section to 100 viewport height which is 100% of the browser window. Right now let's style this image. So let's tap hash hero img. We'll set the height of the image to 100 viewport height as well. And let's set the width to 100%. And let's set the object fit to cover so that the image has the correct aspect ratio. Let's set the position to absolute. And now we can see we have this image with the correct height. Let's also set the position of the image to top so that the top portion of the image is displayed. So let's tap object position, top. Right now we need to bring the text content to the top of the image. So let's tap hash hero and we have this division with the class of text content. So let's tap dot text content and let's set the Z index to a higher value. So I'll just type 200. And it is still not being displayed. That's because we have this position over here in the IMG tag. So here also we need to set a position. So let's tap position and let's set it to relative. And now we can see that the text content is displayed over here. Now let's bring the text content to the bottom of the screen. So I'll just set the position to absolute. And let's set the bottom position to zero and left to zero and the right to zero. And now we can see our text content is at the bottom. Now we can see that we have some spacing at the bottom. That's because this is an anchor tag and the anchor tags are set as display of inline. So that's why this padding bottom is not being added correctly. So let's go back and let's go to the button and let's set the display to inline block. And now if you go back, we can see that everything looks all right. Now for the text content, we will have a white background color. So let's tap background, white. Now we want this heading to be on the left side and all the other content on the right side. So if you go back, here we can see we have this text content and in that we have this container division. And in the container division, we have the left and the right divisions. So let's target this container division, which is inside the hero section. So let's tap hero container and let's set the display to flex and align items to the center and justify content to space between. And let's add a gap of 30 pixels between the elements. And let's set the padding block, which is padding top and bottom to 24 pixels. Now we can see that the right section has a lot of width. So let's set the same width to both these divisions. So let's go ahead and type hero container div. So with this selector, it will select the immediate division after the container. So it will select this left division and this right division. It won't select this buttons division over here. So let's go back and let's set the flex to one. So both of them will have the same width. Right now let's style this heading. So for the heading we have an H1. So here we can see we have this H1. So let's type H1 and let's set the font size to 36 pixels. And let's set the line height to 1.4 and let's set the margin to zero. Now for the H1, we need to set the font family to Poppins. So let's tap font family, Poppins and sans serif. All right now let's style this subheading. So here we can see we have this paragraph with a class of subheading. So I'll just type hero subheading. And let's set the margin to zero. And let's set the line height to 1.8. So that's it with the styling of the subheading. Now let's add some margin top to these buttons. So we have this division with the class of buttons. 
so let's type buttons margin top and let's set the value to 30 pixels let's add some gap between this so let's type display of flex and gap of 16 pixels I think we can decrease the letter spacing a little bit for this subheading so here for the subheading let's type letter spacing and uh, let's set it to a negative value so let's type 0. Point, uh, let's type 0. 0.4 pixels or let's try 0. 0.5 and I think that looks all right so with that we have completed designing this hero section for the desktop version all right so that's it for this video we will continue designing this in the next video and if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day